pretty sure this is not going to fit on my blue mat. <clears throat> well, it does kind of fit, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to work on it at this uh, angle. I think I might have to do a gratuitous sofa shot. <clears throat> Well, no, that doesn't really work either. Uh, so, basically the problem with this is it's got no power. It belongs to a friend of mine. He said that the fuse went, the internal fuse. So he replaced it. It worked for about 10 minutes. And then it went again. So he replaced it. Same thing happened again. Now, he did tell me not to do a video on this because he's embarrassed about his soldering, I think he said. So we'll have a good laugh about that when we when we get to that point. I think I'm just going to have to take the power board out of this. You're just going to have to trust me that it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. So let's get the power board out and let's see what's going on. Sorry if I keep leaning in like this. It's probably a bit weird. But... Okay, I forgot to shout out my Holy Hand Grenade Patreon. Ty M. Base. Massive thanks to you, Ty M, and all my other Patreons. <laughs> I'll be back. And sorry for the husky voice. Why didn't I use an electric screwdriver? Good God, there's more! <clears throat> I'm never going to remember where all those go. Yay! Right, well this looks like the power board. You can see where the 240 volts goes in here and there's a fuse here which has indeed exploded. This solder is not that bad to be honest. I've seen worse in my videos. Right, let's get this board out, let's get it on the blue mat and let's have a look. Ta-da! Right, first thing I'm going to do is just double check there's no voltage in any of these caps. No, I think we're all good. Just for the sake of it, let's check this fuse. No. Okay, so the fuse is definitely blowing. I can see it's, I think it's a glass fuse. It looks like it's actually shattered. Yeah. Right, so the problem I think I'm going to have with this is the fact that he's replaced the fuse and it has worked for a bit and then it's blown again if it had blown straight away then i would suspect that you know there's something that's putting a short to ground and it's just making it pop straight away but the fact that it's working for a bit it's uh, it's, it's slightly worrying because I'm, I'm not sure how easy that's going to be to diagnose and i presume under these heat sinks we've got some kind of MOSFET or some kind of voltage regulatory type thing but they're soldered down as well I think yeah but again if, if one of them had gone surely it just wouldn't work at all why am I doing this why, why did I agree to do this uh, well, anyway, obviously that fuse needs replacing. There's another fuse there. Let's just check that one. Pretty sure that will be okay. Because it looks fine. Yeah, that one's okay. I'm just going to have a look around the board, see if I can see anything obviously wrong other than that fuse. First glance, I can't, but I'll do a proper inspection on it and see if I can see anything. Right, I can't see anything obvious on this board. I've been around the top and the bottom of it. There's nothing that, that jumps out, obviously, apart from the, the fuse that's gone. I've very quickly gone across some of the capacitors to make sure none of them are shorted to ground. Everything seems fine. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to replace this fuse. I've got a couple of spare ones, which are here, that he gave me. And I've just checked they are the correct fuses, the T5AH. 250 volts. I think these are these slow blow fuses. I'm not sure the one that's in now is is correct, which is this glass fuse here. Can't even see the readings on it, but 
it's probably not a slow blow fuse and it might be higher rated which explains might explain why it's worked for um, you know for 10 minutes or so before it's blown I wonder if I replace take this out and put one of the correct ones in whether it will blow straight away so I think I'm going to try that because otherwise yeah I might just be chasing my tail for, for no reason There's one bit out. Can't get this other side out, so I'm just going to add some leaded solder and just try and push it through. Yeah, I think that's got it. Yep. Yeah. Right, okay, that's that cleaned up. Let's push, well not cleaned up, but solder cleared away. Let's push this through. And let's just solder that one in place. There we go. Almost like factory. That's my new uh, new saying. Right, well there it is. It's in. Uh, I'm gonna just see what happens now. Let's. I'm, I don't want to put it all back together because it's a pain in the backside. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Right, I'm gonna have to get creative with these camera angles because of the size of this thing and my room is tiny. Uh, but it's here against the wall, and I've put the power board back in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this back in now and I'm going to monitor it. I'm going to use my thermal camera, I think, and just see if anything gets ridiculously hot. I mean, this this might blow straight away, in which case then I do know there's something else going on. And obviously it might not be this board, you know, it could be this board. Or there's another board here. There's another board over here, just out of shot. Here. So it could be any of those that are putting, you know, a short or something through here, which is making this, this fuse blow. So I figure if I use the thermal camera, I might be able to see, you know, some heat spot. I don't know. As always, I just make this stuff up as I go along. It's not necessarily the correct way to do it. In fact, it's definitely not the correct way to do it. And I'm obviously going to stay well away from this. <laughs> right, let's plug it in and stand well back. Right, it's plugged in, so I'm kind of hoping it's in standby mode now, but I don't know, because I can't see any lights or anything from this side, but nothing has immediately exploded. Right, well, so far, nothing's getting, getting hot or even remotely warm, so let's try and turn this on, got the remote control here. Right, it doesn't appear to be doing anything, so... I'm going to unplug it. I mean, I don't know if the drum roll control might not work, but I don't see how else you're supposed to turn it on. But I'm just going to see, I'm going to check that now, see if maybe that fuse is blown straight away. No, it hasn't. Okay. So maybe I'm just not turning it on properly because I'm an idiot. Do you know what? I forgot to check whether the fuse in here works. Yes, it does. All right, why is it not switching on? All right, let's try again. Apologies for the ridiculous reflection. I want to try it this way around, see if we get any lights on the front. No. Why? So even with the fuse replaced, and the fuse hasn't blown, but now it's not showing any signs of life at all. So what I'm thinking now is that whatever made the fuse blow has now completely failed. See, this is why I like working on small devices. Because I just genuinely do not have the room to be dealing with this. I've grown a pair of balls and I'm just going to see if we're getting 240 volts. I'm really very nervous about this. Yeah, 240 volts. You can't see that. You just have to take my word for it. Just this whole 240 volts thing just makes me really nervous. Right, I'm still plugged in. And I've just been checking to see if we're getting any voltage up here at the top. Uh, which is the low voltage side. These pinouts here. 
uh, tell you what the voltage should be going through these connectors and this bottom one here should be 24 volts and when I check it I'm getting absolutely nothing the one above it should be 24 volts nothing and also if I check on any of these capacitors up here there's no voltage on on any of them so I could be wrong is that the bridge rectifier that does that so it takes the high voltage from the bottom side of the board and it converts it to the DC low voltage for the top of the board and it's obviously not doing that okay I'm pretty sure it's a problem on this board given that it's not outputting any voltage through any of these connectors so I can't see how you know anything on another board could be causing a fault I've got a feeling it's something under one of these heat sinks but they're all soldered on and they look like the components are screwed to the heat sink I just don't know how easy this is going to be but I'm going to try let's start with this one let's have a look at that try and desolder it from this side I just see if it lifts up maybe the components will lift with it I don't know otherwise you have to desolder everything which will be a pain I'm just going to add leaded solder to them to try and hopefully make them easier to come off right and now I can see these two little whatever they are what are they? Looks like a Shotkey rectifier. Beam me up, Shotkey. Don't know why I did that in a Sean Connery accent. Yeah, smash money, partner. Tennis. I don't have a racket. Now this looks like a bit of a beastly one here. I don't know whether that's the bridge rectifier. I can't really see it. It might be. It probably is. Yeah. Rather than trying to unsolder the heat sink, I'm going to see if I can measure it. For Does it need to be plugged in? Oh, I don't know any of these things. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but that way, the measuring both open. That way, I'm getting 0 0.53 and 0 0.53. So, does that mean that's okay? I could do with plugging this board in, couldn't I? I'm just scared. That's just on the other side. This is the bridge rectifier here. I think it is anyway because we've got the two wavy lines in the middle which uh, I think are the AC inputs and then we've got a positive and a negative coming out. And if we just follow this trace round it goes round here, round here and into the fuse here so that is obviously where the AC power is going in but I wonder whether the DC power is coming out of it. Stand well back everybody. This isn't plugged in at the moment. I'm just connecting that up. And I am going to plug it in now. Alright, I'm plugging it in. Okay. Wish me luck. Three. Wait, what? So the bridge rectifier is only getting 3 volts, it's not going to be able to output anything then is it? Alright, so let's just see what that's DC output. So that's 4, 4.5 volts. Well, that's not enough is it? Because it needs 24 volts for the for some of the, the ribbon connectors, for some of the other connectors to the other boards. So where does that, where does the voltage disappear then? So it must disappear from here, between here and here. Right, well, in for a penny and all that. Right, 240 volts. 240 volts. 240 volts. 240 volts. 240 volts. 240 volts. I'm going to say it every time. 240 volts. 
240 volts. 240 volts. 3 volts. So from there to there, we're going from 240 volts AC to 3 volts AC. So whatever's under here, is that this, is it a coil? Right, so from there we're getting 240 volts, and on the other side of it, it's dropping to 3 volts. I don't think that's right. But it can't be, because the bridge rectifier needs a lot more than that, surely. So, I suspect it might be this coil. Let's unplug it, and let's have a closer look at that coil. I'm saying it's a coil, I don't actually know what it is. Oh, whoa, hang on a second. Right, okay, so we've got a couple of... Are these some kind of a... What are they, diodes? I can't tell. Let's zoom in. No, I don't think they are. What are they? On the board it says RV. Are they, so are they some kind of variable resistor? So is it the coil that's bad, or is it the variable resistors that are bad? I don't know. Let's just check them in... On ohms, so we've got mega ohms. It's climbing. Right, climbed up to about 40 and then went to open. Is that, is that normal? And that was measuring 0 0.1. Pretty sure that's not right. Right, so. On this one, we're getting a short right through it, and on this one, we're not. So does that mean this one's working and this one isn't? Well, I don't think I have any of those. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's taken both out. It's possible to read completely different out of circuit anyway. Let's do them one at a time. So that's the top one as I'm looking at it here. So let's pop it in this, see if this thing recognises it. No unknown or damaged part. Right, it's possible then that it just can't, you know, it can't detect it. And that might be normal. So I'll take the other one out and see if that does the same in this. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's, uh, it's recognising either of those. In the component tester, but that doesn't mean that they're both faulty. Might just this might just not be able to do it. Right, well, out of circuit, the both reading is open. Is that normal? Ah, see, I don't know. They can't be if they're open. There's no there's no resistance there at all, is there? I've just been doing some research via Tinternet. And I've happened upon this, which these look like the exact components that I've got here. And these are thermistors, NTC and PTC thermistors. I don't know what they do. I mean, it looks like they measure temperature. So if it's a thermistor, then the resistance is going to change depending on the temperature. But what I don't get is why... On one side of it, we were getting 240 volts, and then on the other side of it, we were getting th 3 volts or whatever it was. I can only assume that they're bad, but I, I genuinely don't know how to test them. Because if they operate based on heat, then <laughs> what do I have to do? Warm them up. Well, I'm not getting anywhere. I think I'm going to order a couple of these and try switching them out. Obviously, that is going to take a, a couple of days to get here. Uh, I can't think of what else to do. Uh, what I might do is just put these back in the opposite way round. If I can remember, <laughs> remember which way round they were. Right, I took the top one out first and that was the top one. So I'm going to put the top one in the bottom one and vice versa. I'm just going to assume that they're the same thing because there's no markings on them. They look identical. I'm also going to assume that they're not polarity sensitive because... Again, there's no markings on them. And let's see if it behaves any different with them the other way around. I don't think it will. Uh, and then I will order some up. I mean, I could be barking up the, the wrong tree here completely. And maybe it's the coil, you know, that's 
that's bad. All right, we're plugged in. Let's see what we're getting now. 240. So let's check up here. 240 before it. And 2.4 after it. Right, at this point, I'm not sure whether these, these thermistors, if that is indeed what they are, is a red herring or not. Just le reading up on it, it looks like they do alter the behaviour with with heat. Um, so I don't I don't really know. But just looking at these coils, that's passing through there and there. That one is on that side, but here it's not. So does that mean it's this coil? Because that. These two should be connected, regardless of whether that thermistor's there or not. Because that's one side of the coil, and that's the other. Look at it on this side. So yeah, from here to here. I don't know whether we can do it on this side of the board, because... Obviously this is like magnet wire, isn't it? It's, it's coated, so we can't just test it on here. Well, that to me means that there is, there is a, I don't know, a break in this coil. I don't, I, I don't know. All I do know is that it's not getting from there to there, which is why the voltage drops from 240 to 3. See, this is where my my knowledge is, it, well, I, don't, I don't really know a lot, to be honest, but I don't know anything about TVs. I've never taken one apart before. This is the first time I've ever done it. Logically, to me... That's got to be where the problem is, in in my stupid fat head. I hate doing this because I really want to try and work out what the problem is on this myself, but I'm kind of getting a little bit stuck around here. I think I'll look to order one of these if I can find out where to get one from, and probably a couple of these thermistors. And I think I'll put this video out and just throw it over to you guys and see if there's anything you know you can you can point me in the right direction basically. Because I'm sure there's someone out there that's got experience working on TVs. But that person ain't me. But I'm pretty sure that's where the problem is. So yeah, another big fat fail. I'm sorry. It does happen. We're only human. After all. We're only human. After all. Don't put your blame on me.